Hello and welcome. The problem with running busy urban bus services, whether it's in towns or indeed cities, is that services can be delayed by traffic and that causes two problems. Your passengers, or customers as we now tend to call them, start to lose faith in the bus service. The more unreliable the service is, the less confidence they have in it, which means they're more likely to find an alternative way of travelling, which doesn't make a very good business model. Another problem caused by traffic congestion is bunching. If you have a high frequency service, and by high frequency I normally mean one that's within 15 minutes of each other, but say for example a bus every 5 minutes, and you get some that are held up for 10 or 15 minutes, you can sometimes end up with about two, three, sometimes even four buses running together. And again, this doesn't do anything to build your customer base up. And the most annoying thing out of all of this is that most of the time, these are problems that are beyond the control of you as a bus operator. It can also have a detrimental effect on your staff as well. The drivers don't want to be sat in a traffic jam for hours and hours not moving and getting moaned at and potentially abused by the customers on the bus and the ones waiting at bus stops wondering why the bus is late. Over the years there's been various different schemes and plans to help increase bus reliability. Various bus lanes and bus priority schemes seem to be a very good idea. But even bus lanes can suffer from congestion and blockages when people illegally stop in them or park in them. Another option is the guided busway. Now guided busways are clever things because they are basically the same width as the bus so are cheaper to build than a standard width road as they're a little bit narrower. There are guide wheels fitted to the front axle of the bus and these fit snugly between the two curbs of the guided busway and these are what guide the bus along the busway meaning that the driver doesn't have to steer. In 1980, an experimental busway was built in Essen in Germany. The O-Bahn was used as a test centre for Mercedes-Benz to develop the guided busway concept. Now, busways aren't completely infallible. They can have people driving along them, lorries get stuck on them, but it tends to be a lot less than it is with a bus lane. West Midlands PTE is one of these companies that experiences a lot of traffic congestion in the operating area. It serves a number of very busy cities and decided to look into the concept of the guided busway. The trial was to be held at Streetly Road in Short Heath and would form the final 600 metres of the 65 route from Birmingham. The busway was formed from concrete slabs with steel guide rails. Now, as I've mentioned, guided bus systems are tailored to the size of the bus, and West Midlands PTE estimated that this would use 25% less road space than a conventional road, which would have obvious benefits in congested areas. At the time of this, the whole concept of guided busways was still under development, and West Midlands Travel wasn't totally sure about how to build a corner into a busway. So this former tramway reservation in Streetly Road, which was straight, was perfect for the experiment. However, the local residents were considerably unhappy about the loss of the broad grass reservation and 40 to 50 mature trees. But to try and soften the blow, 145 new trees and 2,000 hedging and other plants were provided. To operate this experimental new service, West Midlands PTE ordered 14 special trackline, as the service was going to be called, trackline 65, metro buses. And these would be numbered 8101 to 8114 and carried the registration numbers A101WVP to A114WVP. Apart from the guide wheels on the front axle, these were pretty much standard West Midlands Metro buses, apart from the fact they were fitted with experimental electronic dot destination displays. And the batch contained two types of destination displays as well, 8101 to 8 
107 displayed only one line upon the destination, while the rest had a two-line electronic destination display, which allowed the via point to be shown as well as the ultimate destination. The buses were also painted in a unique trackline 65 livery, which was silver and black. Conventional blue and cream liveried Metrobus 2686 acted as a prototype guided bus. Now the busway only went for 600 metres, but was combined with various other route enhancement features of the Trackline 65 project. And these included things like bus lanes that we talked about before, as well as changes in road priorities to improve traffic flow for the buses. The guided busway itself opened on the 9th of October, amid enormous publicity. The bus drivers were told on entering the guided busway to bring the offside guide wheel into gentle contact with the leading guard rail of the busway. As the bus drove forward, it would engage the near side guard rail as well. And from then on, the driver didn't need to steer the bus. And it must have been a very strange experience for them to be driving in this sort of style. Nothing like this had been seen or used before in the UK. So this really was a cutting edge technology experiment at the time. It was also the first guided busway system in the world to use double decker buses. There were other systems in the world, of course, but they were all using single deckers. After one year, Trackline 65 had increased its passenger carrying by 29%. But of course, this wasn't all down to that 600 metres of guided busway. All the other route enhancements, as well as the increased publicity, had also played their part. So it was quite hard to see how the busway had benefited the whole route in general. Despite this, the Trackline 65 project had provided valuable knowledge and information about the whole guided busway scenario for West Midlands PTE. Early in 1986, the PTE reported that up to £500,000 would be required to experiment with curves and other situations not encountered on the existing track. With the experiment complete, on the 26th of September 1987, the busway was closed and work began on dismantling the busway and replacing it back with the original central reservation, grass and trees. The 14 metro buses that had worked the guided busways quickly lost their guide wheels and were repainted by West Midlands Travel, as it was then, into standard fleet livery and they gained the fleet numbers 2961 to 2974 although 2961 was painted in a prototype time saver livery and it remained in this livery for a while. However, happily Metrobus 8110 has been restored as a Trackline 65 bus and is safely in the hands of Aston Transport Museum, which is located in Aldridge. So was the guided busway trials a success? Well, yes, they were. We now have quite a few guided busway systems in the UK. The best known of these, without a doubt, is the Cambridge guided busway. At 16 miles long, this is regarded as the world's longest busway and utilises long stretches of former track bed of a dismantled railway line. I'd be very interested to read your comments and thoughts about guided busways below. Have you driven a bus on one? Have you travelled on one? What did you think? And do you remember the Trackline 65 service from West Midlands PTE? And how would you feel about driving a hands-free Metro bus Mark II? So you've reached this far watching about the West Midlands guided busway and thank you very much for watching. However, I think as you've got this far, I'm going to treat you to a little what they call Easter egg, something special. A little factoid about West Midlands PTE. How does that sound? So while I was doing my research into the guided busway, I managed to get hold of a little factoid about where the West Midlands logo came from when the PTE was formed and I shall share that with you now. When the PTEs were formed at the beginning of 1969 
Some of the PTEs decided on a complete revamp when it came to bus liveries, and they went for bright new modern colours, such as Selnick, who later became Greater Manchester PTE, while others adopted the colour of the largest contributors into the PTE. And this is what West Midlands PTE did. They adopted the colours of Birmingham City Transport, who was the largest contributor in West Midlands PTE. Although they used a slightly lighter blue colour rather than the dark blue favoured by Birmingham City Transport. A competition was set to see who could design the new emblem for the new PTE. And in addition to your emblem being used on the side of the buses and all bus stops and other bits and pieces, you would win a 20 guinea prize. And that's probably around £25 in today's money. The PTE had 44 entries and the first prize eventually went to a Miss Christine Vaughan of Solihull Technical College. And this was unveiled to the public on the 22nd of September 1969. However, it's safe to say that it wasn't met with complete unanimous favour. One alderman suggested more time to make a choice considering a 10 second inspection from a distance was inadequate. He also added with the arrows pointing in two different directions we might find ourselves split asunder. Another councillor also objected to the arrows saying they could point to hell or somewhere else. An urgent decision was required. However, as new buses were on the way, this was the accepted design. And that is how the creation of the West Midlands PTE logo came about. I hope you enjoyed that little factoid, and if it wins you any points in a pub quiz team, well, just remember me. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my future releases in this and my other series here on Sunny YouTube. All money raised goes towards the upkeep and restoration of the buses within the Southern Counties Omnibus Collection. So by watching videos here about buses, you're helping buses. And that makes you a pretty awesome character. Do you know that? And awesome characters like yourself do tend to have incredibly good taste. And there's bound to be something here on my channel that will appeal to that good taste. So stick around and have a look. Thank you so very much for watching. Bye for now.